Whispering in the right. building. How you feel this evening? What's going on? We finally, finally connected. What's going on? Yeah, it takes a while. You know how it is with truck driving. You never know when you're going to be available. Exactly, man. And it's it's a lot of it's it's you know when when people come into the into the sheet trucking trucking group. Shout out to the sheet trucking trucking group. They come in oh, there. And they, they they come in there and they always ask crazy questions, you know. And and when uh-huh. and when we're truck drivers, give them the 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 real and the raw. They feel some kind of way. I don't understand it. Like, you know, if if a person comes in and say, "Hey, you know, I want to get into trucking," and then we actually come in and tell them, you know, you we we got other people in the group. That be sugarcoating the shit. Like, oh yeah, yes, come on yes. in. Do this, do that. No, no, no. Don't baby him. Don't tell him all of that. Let them know that when they get into this, their their time is gonna be different. Their sleep habits gonna be different. Their their vitamin C is gonna be different, man. Let them know the real and the raw about what's going on in trucking, man. Do you agree with me with that? Oh, I definitely agree. I've been driving since I want to say around '97, so and been solo most of my life. It was a, it was quite the learning curve. I drive nights, I drive days, I drive in the snow, I drive in the rain. Just, I just, you know, sometimes I get a little bit of sleep. Sometimes I get way too much sleep. What What is the one thing that you kind of wish that you you would have learned from school? Or the trucking company that you that that you went to to get your CDL, what do you wish they would have told you about uh, about trucking before you got into it that you had to learn the hard way I, out here? I tell you right, well, okay. Uh, well, I started back before GPS, and so I had a paper map, and I think uh, maps would have been nice. And but the number one thing, quite honestly, I wish they would have concentrated more on backing because. When I first started driving, I could not back in. A, I could not back to save my life, mm. and it was so frustrating. And I, you know, I did. You know, this is way back when I did hit a couple of things backing, not major, major, but the backing, the backing just. He's, I wish they would have taught me how to back. Oh man, I, I mean, you know, you get with that trainer. You, you're with that trainer for like a couple of, you know, for like a couple of weeks. But some, depending on the trainer that you with, you, you're not even sure if you're gonna get that much backup time because you know when you go to a truck stop, you got to back up in the truck stop. But that trainer is not gonna take that chance because you know you're tired. He's tired. He's gonna get you in there anyway. When you get to a dock, he's gonna want to do it. So mm-hmm. yeah, you, yeah. You're definitely right about well, that. I had a, I, yeah, I had a mail trainer, and he was a lease operator, and so he just he obviously wanted to make his lease payments. And I understand, you know, I understand that now more than I did when I was in my twenties. But yeah, he was uh, very. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. I, in fact, I ended up learning how to back because I was a yard hopper for fifteen years. That's mm-hmm. when I actually learned how to back. But after I got off the training, I kind of had to teach myself how to back. I'm pretty good now, but. Yeah. I think that's one thing that I mean. Oh, that was frustrating. Yeah, well, it's it's crazy depending on what type of trainers. Like when I was in train, when I was in training, of course, I had a I had a trainer that was a that was a lease driver, and you know what? Mm-hmm. And you know what? Now that I look back at it, I really don't understand why these why these companies allow their lease train their their lease operators well some of them is good not all of them but i no, just not all of them. I, I just don't understand why not just have a company driver train a company driver because the lease driver mm-hmm. only thing he's going to care about is number one his money Make his lease payment his right his money and number two mm-hmm. only thing he's going to care about is don't tear up my truck don't tear up my truck. Don't tear up my oh truck. Oh, my God. Well, again, my trainer, I mean, I couldn't run the air conditioner. And this is back when fuel prices were a lot lower, too. Mm-hmm. Couldn't run the AC. I didn't. Uh, he didn't idle the truck at all. And, you know, when we were shut down, we very rarely, because of the team, we very rarely shut down together. But, obviously, I was on the top bunk, and, you know, heat rises. And, 
it was hot. I just like, and he wouldn't turn the air on because he was wanting to save on fuel costs. You know, I can understand that, you know, if you're paying your own fuel, but at the same time. His, his. And I don't know if it's a difference because he was a guy, and I didn't really, I didn't mind being trained by a guy. And I actually, I learned on an, uh, a ten speed too. Mm-hmm. So Same I didn't here. start off as a uh, yeah. Before that one was, that was yeah. yeah. Before before all they be, before they changed to automatics. I luckily, luckily the first trainer I had, he had a ten speed Volvo, uh, but he yeah, was yeah he was garbage. And then the second trainer that I had to finish up at a 10 speed freight liner. So, you know, but then after that, after that, uh, you know, U S express went automatic with, with all their trucks now. So, you know, yeah, I don't think in the past, uh, shoot, I want to say the past eight years, I don't think I've had it. I don't think I've had it. I don't think I've had a uh, manual at all. It's all been automatic. Mm. Well, I, mean, yeah. I like them. I mean, Especially in tra- especially in LA traffic, I don't have to worry about my clutch like wearing out. Mm-hmm. And you know, like back then, it, it, and quite as it kept, we still get it now. But you know, you, you got the veterans that comes in and be like, "Well, you know, you're not a truck driver if you're not driving a manual." I'm like, "Bro, it's oh it's my, the you same know thing. what? You know, and I I commend all the new drivers that are coming out and doing this business because it's a really it's a hard life to be doing. And I've been doing this for years. Mm-hmm. It's hard, you know, not getting home every, what, two, three weeks at a time, you know, barely spending time with your family. I started, be- and again, I started before cell phones, paper masks. You had phones at every phone booth. And so, you know, you had a collect call or, you know, and it cost, a, it cost a lot of money to call. So, I mean, it's a little bit better now with cell phones, but a give and take because back then we had CDs and the drivers actually talked to each other. Mm-hmm. And now drivers don't talk to nobody. I mean, and even the women, which really surprises me, that the women are really kind of, and sadly enough, kind of standoffish to other women. Yeah, I can understand towards the men, but you know, you smile at a woman and they, I mean, she's like she's clutching her pearls. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's crazy. All right, so Catherine, man, let's uh. Let's start with your backstory right quick before we get into uh get into the issues that you uh that you had currently and the reason why we came together. So let's see, no, of let's, course, of course. let's get into your uh let's get into your back story. Uh, you know, would you you know love to hear what 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 you was doing before trucking or before you got you know, before you got started in trucking. Oh man, well um Circle K for a year. Actually, I was driving for a company called CarQuest, delivering auto parts. And my stepdad, he was an owner-operator, and um, he asked me, I was 20, I think I was like 26, and he asked me if I wanted to learn how to drive a truck. And I laughed, I'd be quite honest, I laughed at him. I was like, there's no way in hell, I'm a girl, I can't drive a truck. Mm-hmm. That, that ain't gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Well, then he, is, he, he, you know, he said he'd pay for the school, and I said, well, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen? I'm not going to make it. And I'm telling you, that was hard, too. That was one of the hardest things I ever did because I didn't know nothing about trucks. I just barely learned how to drive a five-speed. Now they're putting me in a ten-speed. And I'm like, and, you know, having a double clutch. And I uh, I went through, uh, actually, I went to school with Swift. Mm. And it wasn't... Yeah, so I guess, you know, and I like Swift. Hey, I look, look, really look, 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 listen, I, you know, I, I don't have nothing against the Swift Academy. I mean, yeah. as long as you get in and get your license and mm-hmm. if you if you get that that one trainer that trains you good, then mm-hmm. you're good. It's just to me, I just think that, you know, these new drivers that's coming in, that's making a whole bunch of mistakes. Mm-hmm. They, they're not being trained good. And it's just unfortunate that Swift, you know, well, back then they say Swift gives you the opportunity right off the rip. But now, you know, I guess because of their high CSA scores, they 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 kind of like doubling back on, you know, the amount of drivers and the quality of drivers that they're bringing yeah. into the fold. But I, I just feel that that they're not, uh, they're not being trained properly. Well, even when they're training me, I mean, like again, the backing. The 
I had, and again, I had to learn. I ended up uh, when I was a yard houser, I ended up teaching new drivers how to back. I had to learn how to back. They told me to find spots on my trailer and all kinds of really just ridiculous things that just did not add up. And so when I finally learned, okay, and I knew where to watch my angles, but no, the back they were they weren't that even when I was learning, they were not that good at training. As the company itself, the driving form was decent. I did like driving for them, but just the training, I think the training even back then was really subpar. I, and I hate to say this, I like the company in general, just not the training part. Exactly, exactly. So you uh, you, you train with Swift. You got in, got, you know, yeah. we're going we're gonna to fast track everything. So you got your, of course, of so course. you got your CDL. Uh, you, yeah. you went out with a driver for, you know, for a couple of, for a couple of weeks to a month. How long did you actually stay on with Swift before you decided to move on to the next company? Well, I stayed with them for about, uh, around two years. And then, um, well, I'll be quite honestly, I, uh, I got pregnant. And so, I mean, I didn't, I couldn't drive with it. Well, actually I did drive with them there for a while. I, I drove when I was pregnant. They gave me a run from Phoenix to Desert Center, and well, it was crazy. I ended up finally having to take my maternity leave that Friday, and I had my son the following Tuesday. Awesome. Okay. Okay. And, and so, I was back to work like three weeks after I had him, so yeah, I was pretty dedicated. So you say you got pregnant, so was it by a trucker guy or? or? Oh, well, you really don't want to go there? <laughs> yes, I, I, I was young, dude. I was young. I was in my twenties. That's back when truck drivers actually talked to you. So yes, yes. Uh, 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 is 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 he still in his son's life? That's that's the only thing that matters. Oh no no no. He's you know as soon as he found out I was pregnant, he bailed. And in fact, he's another Swift driver. Yeah, no, he bailed, which is fine. My son, you know. His stepdad, who he's called dad his entire life, you know, check him on. Has been a really was a really good dad to him. So no, my oh, son's not really. He wasn't missing out. He kind of like got scared. Like, hey, I'm I'm <laughs> pregnant. <gasps> oh, dude. Yes, hold, yeah, hold, that was, yeah, that was. Hold up. Hold <laughs> up. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. You ain't going nowhere. Uh, uh-uh, uh. Come, come back here. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Come back here. You. I'm with. <laughs> Oh man. Um all right. So you uh you you mentioned uh yard jockey for 15 years? 15 years. I How? worked for then I went to I went to McLean and super super I super great people. I was you know that was crazy too because that was, my son was about shoot 2 years old when I got that job. Mm-hmm. And um I'll tell you, that one frustrated because my son's 22 now. So 20 years ago, I was the very first yard hostler for McLean. Mm-hmm. And the transportation manager, he did not want to hire a woman for the yard. Right. I had two years experience driving over the road, and he didn't, he was really, he did not want to hire me for the yard. I'm like, you got to be kidding. You're, gonna, you're not going to hire me to drive back a trailer in? Are you kidding me? Well, you know what I, you know, I, I respect, I, I respect you yard guys. I mean, you know, when I, when, when I was, you know, of course, back in the day, I didn't because I always had some kind of feeling about you guys like, get out the way, you know, y'all trying to get, you know, move and making sure. And I'd be like, yo, can y'all come? Hey, I need to, hey, hey, bro, can I get this trailer right here, man? <laughs> you know, so I mean, you know, yard officers, you're decent with them. They, they can be your best friend. They know where your trailers are, and sometimes it just depends. Some of them can be a little cranky. We've had some cranky ones, but for the most part, they can be your best friend. They know where they can tell you. I mean, okay, so there's one time in particular, and this is kind of funny. I got to tell you, this is funny. Mm-hmm. So I'm running the yard truck, and there's there's a driver, and he was kind of good looking. And he was outside playing baseball with his son. I wanted to get a better look with look at him, right? Mm-hmm. So I asked the receiver. We're a really good friends. Asked the receiver, "Hey, can you get him in early so I can get a good look at him before I go before I go home?" So yeah, I got him in the dock early. <laughs> you say, "Can you say can I get can I get can I get on? 
Can I? Hey. I just wanted hey. to. I just wanted to get a gander. So yeah, she brought him in like two or three hours early just to get a. And he knew it was me, and he was happy, obviously, because he's getting unloaded quick. So. I got you. I got you. So fifteen. So it goes both ways, you know. Women look too. So fifteen years, uh, yard jockeying. What what was the company you was 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 it fifteen years with the same company? You said McLean. Was it was yeah, it yard? 15 so fifteen years, years McLean, with McLean. Great company. Okay. Yeah, okay. 15, great company. Well, then uh, my husband he decided he was going to go over the road, and he wanted me to drive with him, and you know and. In between that time, because they didn't need a CDL for their yard, so I let my CDL go. So he wanted to drive over the road, uh, and so he insisted I went and got my CDL again and been driving ever since. Oh, man, that's what's up. I am happy to hear that for you, man. So Yeah, that was do- 2013. So during your time as a, as a yard jockey, you know, you 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 could pretty much perfect your 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 blind side backing in doing yard Oh, jockey, I got really right? good. I old oh, trust me, I got really really good because you know how it is. There's some spots they ask you to pay. You're like, you want me to put this trailer where? Are you kidding me? In fact, we worked for this one company there for a while, and the way I, I my husband, I was a lot better backing than my husband, mm-hmm. so I always did all the backing, and um. This company was, I mean, it was really, really tight. And I just needed him to stand out there and make sure I didn't hit nothing. He didn't have to direct me or anything. They would get, like, temp guys in the warehouse, and they would they would, they would make bets on whether I was going to be able to make the corner or not. I always did because I knew what I was doing. But, yeah, I actually had people betting on me. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, Catherine, man. So talk to me. Tell me. You, um... You was working for this one company. How how long you was working with with that company before everything turned to shit? Oh, the one I'm with. Well, the one I'm just quitting now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, let's back up a little bit. I did tri state for a couple of years. Loved doing it. Loved hazardous waste. Loved doing explosives. Government. That was a really cool job. I didn't want to stay out all month, so mm-hmm. I decided there was a company not too far from me that did containers. Now, you know, containers in California and back, that shouldn't be too hard, right? Right. Aided containers. Aided containers. Well, you know how they portrayed them on the news? It was worse. It was horrible. Five hours waiting to get in the, the dock just to get them. I hated that job. And I felt bad because there was, it was a good company also. So the company that, well, in fact, this is my last run firm. I started with them uh, December, just in December. And then it was kind of funny. They flew me out first class up to Wisconsin. And I've never flown first class. Highly recommend it. So, yeah, just since December, their uh, main, uh, what they mainly haul is furniture. Every once in a while, broker loads, but mainly furniture. Mm hmm. Oh, there you go. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. All right. So, I mean,. So how long you was so how long you was working with working with this company before you know they they they, they, they okay. well what had happened was about three I I think three four weeks ago I think it was like three weeks ago um most of them was just most of my loads were just going from Wisconsin back to uh, uh California and back most of them every once in a while they'd give me like a two or three uh, drops but not often. Mm-hmm. Well, the the one that uh, led up to my deciding to quit, it was three stops. My very, very first stop, I go in there, and the dock was kind of, it was the, the dock was grass. It was a weird dock. So I back in and everything, and um, they unloaded me. And it wasn't just like maybe four pieces they unload. I take my paperwork into the uh, receiver or the boss, whoever the heck he was, and um, he signed the paper, and, and I told him, I said, you know, I need a copy of that, please. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, it's all there. I said, well, no, I know it's, I know it's all there, but I, I still would like to have a copy. No, I asked the guy I unloaded at first. I asked him for a copy, and he looked at me like I didn't, like I lost my mind. Then he told the boss, and he's saying, well, it's all there, and he wouldn't give me a copy of the uh, paperwork. In hindsight, I should have called my uh, driver manager. I really should have, but I didn't. Right. Because prior, I've uh, turned in uh, trip sheets without uh, the manifest, and they've always paid me. Right. 
So I did my next two drops, no problem. Transload all my paperwork. This last, not this last Friday, but the Friday before, I'm expecting to get paid. Wake up Friday morning, I still have, I didn't get paid. I'm like, well, what the heck? Okay. So I called the payroll. I was like, you know, why didn't I get paid? What's, right, what's Well, you going forgot on? that one manifest. I'm like, I did the dang load, didn't I? You got two of them. You can pay me for the two that I dropped at least, but don't pay me at all. And I was already getting frustrated with the company. I was like, you know what? Just consider this my two weeks notice. So, so just because, and you know what? I, 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 I honestly never ran into that per se, but I always wondered to myself, like, what would happen if I don't get nobody to sign off on the bill? Like, I mean, is, is that really a, 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 a issue? I mean, or would that really affect me to, to get paid or not? Because I know there was one time that um that I didn't I, I think I forgot the bill but luckily mm -hmm. luckily for me the you know they was able to call the shipper or the receiver where I was at and the receiver you know faxed the bill over to him so, yeah yeah but yeah. I, I don't think at least I, I at least it, I haven't experienced it uh I am Ever, ever not gotten paid this is the first time that i've ever had a uh a, the person receiving the load refuse to give me a copy of the bill it's the very very first time i've never had anybody refuse i don't personally you know maybe it's because i'm a girl maybe it's just because i you know i, I don't argue with i just i'm not going to argue with them because that's not my job i'm delivering it as long as i but i'm not going to argue i i just i refuse to and again, in hindsight, I probably should have called my driver manager, my mistake. But I remember one time with the Tri-State, you know, sometimes, well, Tri-State had a lot of manifests. I actually could not find my manifest. I didn't know what the heck happened to it. Mm -hmm. Tri-State, you know, they needed a manifest, but they still paid me. So this is the second time I've ever had this happen in the entire time I've been driving. But to not be a paid period, that one, I just. I was done. I'm that's, not going to work. That's not cool. Days. Yeah, that's that's not cool to, to not to not get paid. Was this um? Oh no. Was was this a black ops company? And what I mean by black ops company was this like a Chicago land company, a foreign company, or you no, know? no, not that I know of. They've been in business where they claim they're in business for 34 years. They're out of Hudson, Wisconsin, and you know, and the interesting thing is though, the following. So that was a Friday. The following Tuesday, my driver manager, I'm trying to, that's what I just, I wouldn't found another job. I was right. like, nah, there's too many jobs out yeah, there. Yeah, you know, when you so got, I mean, that's the good thing about, you know, I, and I can, I can safely say when somebody come on and say, hey, uh, I got my CDL, I can quit today and work tomorrow. At least that's mm -hmm. a good thing for us as long as you keep your CDLs clean. So yeah, you can oh, yeah, you can get definitely. you you can you can leave Friday, be off Monday, mm -hmm. I mean be off Saturday and Sunday, and then you could be, you know, in Baltimore the next month I mean the next morning on T V channel five saying that uh mm -hmm. our new team is the Baltimore Browns. Like, bro, didn't yeah, I just, yeah. didn't I just saw y'all Sunday night in Cleveland? Well, the funny thing is, <laughs> well, the reason I made the post is because catch this. This was funny, though. And I was like, so that was Friday. So the following Tuesday, my, I'm, I I get a job by the following Monday. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm already got a job. I got an offer letter and, well, pending offer letter, but it was, it was later that day. But mm -hmm. the funny thing is, my driver mm -hmm. manager called me because I was trying to, the job I have, they have orientation over there towards Chicago, and I'm in Hudson. And so what I was going to do is just uh, take the truck back to Hudson, because I live in Arizona. I was going to take the truck back to Hudson, rent a car, go over to Chicago, and get orientation. So, you know, I'm not going to miss paycheck. And so my driver manager calls me that Tuesday. And I'm telling him, you know, look, I've already put in my two weeks. I'm just going to finalize it with you. This is what I need to do. And he's like, I don't know. He was kind of weird about it, and there was... Yeah, in fact, that didn't work out, but what was crazy, and, you know, I told him, yeah, I'm putting in my two weeks, so, you know, it's actually a week and a half now. The very next day on a Wednesday, I get an email, a newsletter from the company that I'm quitting, 
Mm-hmm. They're going out of business. Oh. Wow. I was like, what the hell? How fair? I, that was just, but the, by the grace of God, I quit, and they're going out of business anyway. Wow. 34 years in business, and they're selling all the trucks and trailers. Wow, that's 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 great. That's karma, like you said. That was, was that yes, was yes. that was karma. Like you know, y'all 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 f with my money, and and you didn't even know you know what to do. Now, now is there anything you can do to to kind of force them to pay you? Is there any anywhere to turn? Is there anybody to talk to? Any any any. Any local or 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 legal thing to do to, to to get paid because messing that's that's the problem with some of these companies and your and you say your company been in business been in business for over thirty plus years yeah I, I can't understand a company of that particular magnitude messing with your money versus uh versus companies you know the Chicago land companies because the one guy. Uh, kind of snapped, and he killed the owner of the of the one company because they was playing with his Dang, money. I can, yeah, he was on yeah. his way. He was on his way to the other company. He was about to take that dude out because he was playing with his money. And I, I made an episode about that because I I just think that if we're out here sacrificing our time. Mm-hmm. And 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 doing the stressful job that you required of us, then mm-hmm. you need to pay us. Yes, I'm spending time away from my home, from my family. I mean, I get to see my family every couple of weeks. I mean, I, I'm you know, I live in, I literally live in my truck. I mean, I still got a house, but you know, I feel like I got share, I got custody of my, I lost custody of my house. I get to visit it every couple of weeks. But I still, you know, I still have to pay my mortgage. I still have to pay my, my what little bit of an electric bill I have. I still have household bills that I have to cover. Mm-hmm. What, I, what I plan on doing, they did tell me they're going to wait to uh, uh, for the company to uh, fax over the manifest, which could have been just done in one day. Mm-hmm. They could have just called them, hey, driver made a mistake, didn't get a copy, faxed the copy. And this day and age, they could, I mean, they could have gotten a copy. Exactly. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna see. It didn't show up on this check. I'm gonna wait and see if like, my final check. If it doesn't show up. I mean, a small claims. I'll, I'll take them the small claims, and I have no problem doing that. Okay. Okay. So there, there is a way to 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 get rectified legally. I'm sure small claims. I'm I'm pretty sure I can. You know, the only problem is gonna be is I'll I'll probably have to file in uh, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And so that means I have to get a load up to Wisconsin. Yeah, you got to get a lawyer and in. Right, right. So I will have to do that. But yeah, I have no problem taking the small claims. All right. Well, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, I hope everything. Uh, I hope everything works out all right. So the new job. Are you at the new job already, or you're going to the new job? No, in fact, I'm still with the. I'm still with the company that I'm quitting. Mm-hmm. I'm taking uh, the trailer that I have right now over to. I just got to go over to Tolson in Arizona, and then I'm going to take their truck over to uh, Moreno Valley because they have a yard down there. Because, I, I mean, I'm going to take their truck back to them. And then, so I'll get there probably Thursday, and then I'm supposed to start orientation the following Monday. <laughs> See, that's <laughs> See, that's you how know, it is, that's what, man. <laughs> that's, that's how you do it. Industry. There is no reason for, you know, a truck driver, if you really want to drive, there is no reason for any truck driver to be without a job. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, it, it is kind of hard for for drivers, inexperienced drivers. It's hard for them. It's hard for drivers that's, you know, that was smoking weed every day. You know, we, we, got, oh, those, yeah, yeah. we got those type of drivers and those type of people that's coming in there that's being mad at me for mm-hmm. saying about, you know, what you need to do in order to, you know, to mm-hmm. drive. And then, you know, you got uh, you got other drivers that's 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 companies is doing a little bit more lockdown on on because of their insurance and stuff like that so but over well, they, but overall if you got a clean 
verify if you got a clean, verifiable background, then uh-huh. you shouldn't have a problem getting the job. Even uh, the new, the even the brand new drivers. I mean, from what I've what I've seen, a lot of the new drivers, a lot of them, they. Ex- I've been doing this for a long time, so I know what the industry pays. And sometimes I'll take a little less. Sometimes I'll, it just really depends. But quite honestly, you can take a little less if you get enough miles to cover. Because sometimes they'll, you know, some of these companies will offer, you know, really good cents per mile, but then you get no miles. Exactly. And you're sitting down on, especially when you're going to grocery warehouses or yeah. like, you know, in shipping yards, it's you a, get no miles. It's a, it's so it's, I mean. It's it's a it's a it's a balance, you know. It really is. It really per, is. Get lot but, get lots of cent per miles. Get less miles. Get less uh-huh. cent per mile. Get lots of miles. You know. Exactly because it's, like it's I said, balance. doing the containers, I was not getting. I was you know that was the worst because it was based out of I'm from Buckeye and it was based out of Buckeye and you would think I'd be home all the time. I wasn't because I was always sitting there waiting to get unloaded and they paid good for, for miles but if you can't get the miles then what gives the, the mileage pay exactly so, exactly but a lot of these young drivers you know and I, I feel for them you know they hear you know what you know as drivers we always like to talk about how great we're doing for the most uh, part you, we really you, are. you know social media you know i i, I oh, think yeah. I, I think social media came in and and just made caps out of everybody when it comes to this trucking oh industry. yes Yes, those so, super truckers. Yeah, it just just made caps I, out of everybody. Like, yeah, I got <laughs> this, that, and the third, but yet you got your cash app on your on on your profile. I, I don't get that. I I, I just um, made a I, I just made a video about that, and I got lady I got lady truckers of TikTok getting on my ass. Like, who cares? You know, we we got to make our money some kind of way. We got to need a side hustle. I'm like, bro, you over here bragging about making about fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars a week. But yet you got your cash uh-huh. app in your in in your bio. Why? Why? Why well, should a, I? A, why yeah. should I? You know, you're not even on YouTube. I I can understand if you was on <laughs> YouTube like myself, and you you be yeah. like you have your cash app on your YouTube channel. That's showing that you know for your YouTube. But a three minute TikTok video, come on now, they ain't they ain't no work. They ain't no work. Well, they they you know, swear up and down. There's a couple of the girls that I like listening to. Some of the girls are pretty decent, but you know, a lot of them is like, oh, dude. Oh my God! Leave, dry, leave it up to the, leave, leave it up to the ones that got the 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 high followers. Leave it up to them to come and be <laughs> like, I do work. I I do a lot of work. Mm-hmm. I put a lot of work in my content, bro. You only the video is only three minutes. That's it. It's well, only three minutes. Right on. Try doing, try doing other, work on yeah, YouTube. There was, <laughs> there was a there was a girl the other day that I was watching, and I was like, "Dang, she's a badass." She was a she was a car wall. There's no way in hell. I mean, running those cars up on that ramp, and she was out there. And she was literally working like a monkey climbing up on it. That one I'm impressed with. Or I'd love to see. Quite on. I've never personally done flatbed, but I would love to see videos of these girls throwing tarps. I because I've seen several uh, female flatbed drivers. I was yeah, but you never. Guys. You, you know, know what? I I you seen. Know, you, I girls, agree with you. I agree. And, you know, with we do like to look cute, you know. And if you want to stand pose in front of your truck looking cute, okay, that's you know, okay, that, you know, good for you. But I, I love watching the girls actually. I mean, or the ones that are you know backing. I just I love watching those. I agree with you. you know, I I honestly agree with you about the females. Flatbedders, shout out to the fl- uh, female flatbedders oh, out there. But listen, though, I'm like, I'm like what Catherine said. I want to see you guys throw some chains, throw some mm-hmm. straps, not just, not just be like, yo, I'm a flatbedder, and I'm dr-. no. I want to see you out there scratching it down. Like, what's up? You know, shout so out. Those are the girls that impress. It's not those girls impress me. There's some, or even the. There's some girls that hauling cattle. Those girls impress me. Yeah, I talked to I talked to a cattle hauler, female cattle hauler. Yeah. she was she was awesome conversation though. Yeah, and they're fun too. I mean, they they I like that they have their they have their self assured, 
and they don't give a crap what anybody thinks about them. I mean, obviously, we all like kudos. We all like a little pat on the back. Hey, you're doing a good mm-hmm, job. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, they're still just doing it because they like doing it. Well, that's what's up. Oh. That, that is what's up, man. Well, Catherine, I really appreciate the conversation tonight. Man, oh, I, 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 man, it. I, I enjoyed it. my I enjoyed myself, Catherine. Thank you very much. Um the no, company the, the company that you're going to right now, did they you you did mention that they offer you a little bit more than what what you're making now, right? Is what 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 would oh, you be doing? Oh yeah. Which, which, I'm going to the company I'm going to is called uh, Logiflex, mm-hmm. and um, three thousand dollars sign-on bonus, mm. uh, sixty-five cents a mile. Mm. They said it's a mainly hazmat, and I like doing. I personally like doing hazmat. I really do. Explain. Do me a favor before you get on up out of here. Explain to the people because a lot of people keep talking about they want to jump into hazmat, but they don't understand what hazmat entails. Though, like a lot of the routes that us regular uh, that us that are you know our regular drivers can't. I mean, that can drive, but a lot of the routes that we can go, you guys yeah. can't go, right? Oh yeah. I mean, you you got to watch your routes. You do have to stop at railroad tracks and what have you. you got to be careful, uh, depending on when. Because I've hauled in a lot of hazardous waste. I've hauled uh, medical waste, which is kind of gross. I've hauled explosives. I have fireworks. I've hauled... Uh, one of the things that I always thought was kind of cool, I actually hauled missiles to the uh, military base down in Yuma, which is kind of... Yeah, I mean, the big old long missiles. I hauled missiles. A lot of ammunition. You know, lots of explosives. Um, but the explosives, you, you you have to do a team because you can't leave that truck unattended ever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the hazmat was actually, I mean, my the 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 one the biggest problem I had with hauling hazmat in the very very beginning was knowing what placards to put on because of the weights and everything. And so, but mm-hmm. uh, Tri State gave such a great class. I mean, it was like a three day class just on how to placard your trailer. How about and knowing what? How about how how about uh, areas like like city areas? Because I I I know like alternate routes like instead of ninety, it's like four ninety. Instead of yes, seventy, you, you, it's you, like two seventy. So you had to go yes. routes around the city. Why? Yes, I, now, now I got yes. a two part question for you, being that you that you drive hazmat. Why? Yeah. Why? I mean, I I already know, but I want you to let the people know. Why can't you drive through cities as a hazmat driver? Well, it's not even. It's not even just the. Uh, if you have a lot of a uh, uh, lot of people in a small area, and especially with explosives, but also with like a there's some of them that are like in the inhalants. You know, it's the the exposure. If, mm-hmm. if, you know, God forbid, I mean, even hazmat drivers sometimes wreck, and the exposure is such a higher risk to a large population of people. Mm-hmm. And so we'll bypass around those big cities. Like, for example, um, I live outside of Phoenix, but you cannot take a hazmat load through the tunnel in Phoenix downtown. You'll have to take the 17 around because of the exposure. This, like, this, like, tunnels up in, uh, this like tunnels up in uh, New York. You you definitely can't go through any any. From what I understand, you can't go through any of the tunnels uh, leading well, into New York. You have to go over the GW Bridge in order to get into the. Well, city. you know, there's that. Uh, what is that tunnel out, outside of Denver? I think it's. Um, I think it's called the Eisenhower Tunnel. Mm-hmm. You actually, and I had to do this. I, I I'm afraid of heights. You have to take Loveland Path over the tunnel. Mm-hmm. And it's high and whiny and oh, it's just yes. But no, you can't take it. In fact, I remember what was it a year or so ago? A driver was caught. I mean, this is so stupid too. He was caught taking his placards off so he could go through the Eisenhower Tunnel. Well, he got he got yeah, he lost his license. For yeah, that that's one. yeah, that's a license lose right there. Oh uh, yeah, that also extremely- another thing you guys can't do. Y'all can't smoke in the truck at all. Is no, that true? No, 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 no. Yeah, that is true. Man. Especially with, especially with flammables, explosives. Yeah, you have to be uh, 25 feet away from um, any of that. Yeah. Wow. 
Well, Kat. But I did it. But like I said, I love the job, though. It was a great job. I just, I was, you know, you know, the best the thing I like most about Hall on Hazmat, especially explosives, when you turned on your turn signal, people moved. <laughs> you know, right? Like, get out the way. You didn't have to ask them twice, especially with the explosives. You turn on your signal, yeah, they moved. They made room for you. You know, because nowadays, you turn on your signal and they just look at they, you yeah, stupid. They, no, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like a deer in the yeah, headlights. Move They'll move out the way. Yeah, it's like a deer in the headlights. Like, no, nah, we ain't going to move. Oh, buddy. You, you could, yeah, that bro. Was like, no, nah, bro, that I, I need you to get out the way, my G. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> like, mo. Well, Catherine, thank you very much. You are a citizen. I really do appreciate you coming on and uh, chopping it up with me. The best conversation starts here on the Lockout Men podcast show. So if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me and have a good time, just like my driver, Catherine, you can do that. Hit me up, 216-600-2090. And while you guys at it, give me the HBO special. That's the help. A brother out special you can do that by hitting that like button subscribe button and the new thank you button to show support for the channel until next time everybody y'all take it easy